All right, so I was out of town for a whole week, uh, which is longer than I wanted to go before the next water change, but let's see what we got. Oh my God. Well, that smells. All right, so these are way too rotted. I am not going to attempt to uh, prepare this for the beetle colony. So, show you a new way to do it. The method we'll be using today is called maceration. It basically means we're going to take these, put them in a bucket, fill that bucket with water, and let it rot. Oh. <coughs> All right, so I got the two things in the bucket. And for step two, And move on. Now the idea behind maceration is that instead of having beetles or other insects eat all the flesh for you, you're just going to let the bacteria do it for you. So the third step is going to be optimizing that bacterial growth. Now the best and easiest way to do that is to add heat. Now. You don't want it to get too hot. Uh, I can't just put this in my degreaser that gets 115 degrees. Uh, proteins start to denature at that temperature and uh, bacteria will have a hard time surviving. But, as you know from seventh grade science, adding heat and moisture will make bacteria bloom. So we're going to, I am going to just stick this in that corner over there uh, of my backyard where it's far away from all my other neighbors. It's kind of that corner, everyone's corner that's far away from everyone's houses because it is going to stink. If you're unable to do that, just find a very well ventilated space, preferably as far away from people as possible. But you'll be able to gauge via the smell how, how bad it is, how far away it needs to be. If it is cold outside, or you just live in an area that doesn't get very warm, one popular way to do it is to use heaters. Go to the pet store, get an aquarium heater. These things are really popular because they are self thermostated. Uh, sometimes you can set the temperature. This one goes up to 93. Um, I think an ideal bacterial growth temperature is about 90 degrees. That's like a standard incubation in a lab for bacteria. If you just take this and throw it in your bucket, that's really nasty. I would never use this for anything again. I wouldn't stick it back in your fish tank. These can be expensive. I think one this size is 30 to 50 bucks, but then you don't need a thermostat. If you had a, a nice heater in there without a thermostat, you drop it in your bucket, you walk away, come back later your bucket is boiling now you've destroyed your bones so thermostat or regulated temperature like I said I'm just gonna stick it in my backyard it's it's warming up I mean it's it got it's probably 85 degrees today here in good old desert Utah so I'm just gonna stick it out there it might overheat a little bit but as it fluctuates up and down the bacteria will grow and recede and grow and recede so I'm not too worried about it Ideally, you want your bucket to be cracked open just a little bit or have holes in it. I probably won't do that because I don't want the smell to escape. But if you have a tight seal, then you need to periodically open it and check it, let it air out. If it's sealed too tightly, one, you risk, just like that bag earlier, you risk an explosion. But two, um, if it's sealed for too long, then your efficiency is gonna go way down. The anaerobic bacteria start to kick in and it's way slower of a process. Um, macerating, if you do it correctly, can be done very quickly. You can get a skull to bones in a matter of days. So we're gonna see how well my, my system works. If you were running a larger operation, or you just didn't want to ruin your heater, you can just put your bucket in a bin 
or five or six buckets, fill the bin up with water, you know, up to there, then stick your heater in the bin. There's jets. Live by the Air Force Base. So if this bin was filled with buckets, you fill the water up to here, stick your heater in there, heater doesn't get ruined, and you can heat up several projects at once. And if you've got a keen eye, then you realize that this is almost the exact setup that I have for my degreaser. I haven't made a degreaser video yet. Maybe I should. The reason that I squeezed out all the blood and brain juices is because when you start macerating, you want as much of that active bacteria in there as you can. In a day or two, I'm going to do a water change. Now, as that as the bacteria do their thing and that water gets all sorts of nasty, you're going to want to change it. When you empty out all the waste and then fill it back up with water that gives the bacteria more to grow on, the buildup of waste can make the water environment more acidic, uh, things like that, that's less optimal for the bacteria. So water changing is going to really optimize our time. But when you do a water change, only change out about 90% of the water, you want a nice chunk of nasty bacteria in there when you fill it back up. Now, if you are familiar with fish tanks and the nitrogen cycle and beneficial bacteria, then you know that when you do a water change, do it with water not from your tap. You don't want to use a, that chlorinated chemical water to kill off all that bacteria and then you're going to have to start from square one and work it your way up. Like I said, if you do it just right, maceration is quick. If you don't know what you're doing, you can have a, a bucket of rotting meat for a long time. Well, my bucket's back there, and I guess we'll check on it tomorrow, see how it's going. Maybe two days. The other problem with maceration, other than the, the smell, is the wastewater. When I tell you that I'm gonna do a water change, and change out 90% of that water, you need to have a game plan of what you're going to do with that water. It is a show. Having done this before with varying levels of success, I think my best option is to bury it. So I'm gonna dig a hole, dump that water into it, bury it, in theory. We'll see what happens. All right, I had to move the bucket and uh, put it behind a fence so the dogs wouldn't bother it anymore. It's been three or four days. I was hoping to get it after one or two, but let's see what we got. Oh yeah, you can see all that fat floating on top. And we're gonna pour about 80% of this down the hole. Yep, there's the smell. All right, and you can see those heads in there and some, and a dead fly. Look, you can already see, oh, gotta cover my nose. You can already see the flesh has gone away enough that you can see the bone underneath. Good progress. There's still water left in there, so let me go get that hose. This is irrigation water, so it's not treated with chemicals that would kill the bacteria that we're using. Let that soak in for a minute before I fill in the rest. As you can see here with the water displacement, as I was filling it up with dirt, it was gonna overflow. So, just wanted it to sink in a little bit before I continued. Nope, still, still needs to sink in a bit more. 
I do not want that water to hit the surface. That's how you get neighbors complaining. So I'll wait another few minutes. All right, it's all pretty well in there, which is great because I'm losing daylight here. So even though this water's really dirty, uh, it's, it is safe. I mean, by that I mean it's, it's safe to go down a drain. Let's say you were just macerating something small like a mouse in a jar on a windowsill and you needed to flush it down the toilet. Um, don't pour it down any storm drains or anything. That's too much yuck down one drain. Might cause harm if you don't want to do that. I wouldn't do this anywhere a dog could dig it up. Um, technically, this is in my yard. My dogs could dig it up. So I'm going to put a big old rock on it. And I'm going to be out of town for a week with my dog, so I won't have to worry about it. <sighs> All right. I'll go place this bucket back in a sunny spot. All right, so I was out of town for a whole week, uh, which is longer than I wanted to go before the next water change, but let's see what we got. Oh my God. Well, oh, that smells. See those bubbles? Great thing about maceration is that it starts degreasing early. That's all fat floating on top of the water. Oh, all right, I'm gonna go dump this. I'm losing daylight, so I don't know if I can film it. Okay, I'm only gonna film as long as I can stomach the smell, but. Look at that bone. That week really did it good. All of that is exposed bone. Still got some fleshy bits, just a few fleshy bits. As I poured the water into the hole, I could see big chunks of fleshy bits that had melted off. So, we're making good progress. Oh, all right, all right. But time to fill it with Again, I did leave some water down in there. I actually emptied out more water than I think I should have, but it should be all right. Look at that flesh just melted right off. Now it goes way down when it's covered. That, that stain is never coming out of that bucket, by the way. This is your, your gross bucket for now, forever. All right, a couple days later, let's check again. Significantly less, but definitely still reacting. I have manually removed just as much meat as my slippery fingers can get a hold on to. Still some tough spots. Still got some nose cartilage. All right, I think that's as good as it's gonna get for now. Fill it with water and give it a couple more days. Is there a hole in my glove? Oh God, I don't, I can't tell. That skull floats until the air comes out, there it goes. All right, this is it. I'm hoping this is the last one. Water looks a lot clearer, for sure. Ah, <laughs> oh, so, so close. So close. I might be able to pick the rest of this off manually. There's that connective tissue, the sinews that was holding that jaw to the skull. 
pretty well obliterated now. I do have a little bit of black bacterial growth on this bone. My jaw is starting to come apart. It's very loose. The teeth are falling out, so all the tissue around the gums is gone. Oh yeah, this one fell apart completely. A little bit of tissue holding it together. This happens all the time. Uh, happens a lot when I'm degreasing. The jaw will come apart. I repair almost every single jaw. Ooh, teeth falling out. More bacterial growth. Big canine. Looks like some flappy larynx tissue. Hyoid bones. Bottom canine. Oops, don't lose that. Alright, let's take a look inside. Alright, water's much clearer. Oh, stinky. Oh. This looks much more like uh, degreasing water than maceration water, so I think we might be done. Let's check it out. There's still the teeniest bit of flesh left. Ah, it's bugging me. So close. All right, we'll give it one more round. If I can't get rid of that with one more round, then I'm throwing it in the, with the beetles. All right, it's been another week or two. Mmm, nasty. It's all red. No idea what that means. But, I also don't see any flesh. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, I think that might be it. I don't have my glove. All right, here we are in the workshop. There's my degreaser all set up. Let's get these wolves in there. I like to use these reusable grocery bags or uh, produce bags is what I think they are on Amazon. And here's the jaws and the teeth and everything else that was left in the bucket. The weird part is I also found this. No idea where this nail came from. Nothing has been in this bucket except for these wolf skulls. So I'm thinking that maybe this was wedged in someone's throat or something. Uh, when the skull's finished, maybe we could take a closer look on where this might have been wedged. And let's throw in this pile of raccoons, bobcats, and badgers with those wolves, just so they're not lonely. As long as everything is submerged. There we go. And there you have it. Wolves defleshed, macerated with water, soon to be degreased. 
It's hot as hell in my workshop. It's 95 degrees, according to my beetle thermostat. Also, I've been hovering above this hundred and ten degree water so I'm super sweaty degreasing video will be next so check that out if you want to see how nasty that step is be sure to subscribe if you want to see the entire process I have beetle cleaning videos macerating degreasing I have videos on every step of the process, or will be making videos, so that's where the subscribe button comes in. Hit the bell notification so you know every time I upload something. I upload a video at least once a month on the first Saturday, but depending on demand, maybe I'll start making more. If you want to see more behind the scenes, join my Patreon. The members of my Patreon watched this whole wolf maceration live as I was taking pictures and updating them. So so they knew this was coming for a while. And you could be too. It's a great place to ask more personalized questions, um, have some one-on-one -on -one time. Maybe I'll have some more. I'll go live with my members more. So, and you get a free sticker pack. Find me on patreon.com slash flockins necroparlor. I'll see you next time. All right, let's see what that looks like after just a couple days. Oh yeah, super nasty. Gotta change that out. Stay tuned for the degreasing video.